Hi, what I'd like to do today is demonstrate the use of the binomial test and its application to single subject design research. Now, you already have a bunch of different tools for single subject design research analysis. Uh, most people tend to use the PND or percentage of non overlap data. The PEM, I think, is superior to the PND, that's the percentage exceeding the median. Either, uh, in either event, uh, if you already have your data charted out in a graph, then computation of the binomial test is pretty easy to do if you have access to SPSS. So what we want to do is we want to graph out the data. And in my previous uh, uh, videos, I demonstrate how to do the PEM and the PND. So we're going to use those graphs from my prior videos uh, you can check those out if you're interested. Here's a uh, set of fake data. And the question is whether or not the treatment phase data points are on the favorable side or unfavorable side of the median of the baseline. I think using the median here is a good idea. Uh, better than using the best score from the baseline, which would be the PND approach. You could do it either way, but uh, I have a preference personally for using the median of the baseline. So we take the uh, baseline median, which is 14, <clears throat> insert a horizontal line there, and for each data point in the treatment phase, we're going to count it as yes or no in terms of whether it is on the favorable side or not. For this hypothetical, higher scores are better. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 data points that are better than baseline. And if it falls right on the baseline, then it counts as a no. So we have 1, 2, 3 treatment phase data points that are not better than baseline medium. And that's really all there is to it. Now, you don't take a proportion here as you would if you were doing the PND. But rather, what we're going to do is we're going to enter it into SPSS and do the binomial test uh, in that way. So let me pop out of PowerPoint, open SPSS, and you can see that I've got an empty data field here. I'm going to create a variable, I'm doing this from scratch. I'll just call it data. That's all you need. And if you recall, we had 10 values that were favorable compared to baseline of the median, and three that were not. So the, the ones that are favorable will be given a, a value of 1, and those scores that were unfavorable will be given a value of 0, hence the binomial nature of the data. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to compare this against the null hypothesis that each of those data points could have been on either side of that median line. So if we have a whole bunch of data points on the favorable side, that will begin to, to uh, reduce the p-value and tell us that um, eventually if we have enough of them that it's significantly different from chance. So we had uh, 10 ones and three zeros. I'm going to put the zeros once, uh, rather, first, and then 10 ones. So these data points here, these zeros and ones, are simply reflections of these values right here. Now, before you analyze the data, <clears throat> SPSS makes you go through a couple of steps. So let me show you that. Go to Analyze, Non-Parametric, One Sample. Tell it to scan the data. I don't fully understand why it scans the data, but you can see that that went pretty quickly. Click the Fields option. If you had more than one variable here, we only have one. But if you had more than one variable in your data set, they would all show up 
in this field. And you'd have to select out all the ones that you don't want to analyze. That's kind of weird about this particular procedure in SPSS because normally SPSS is set up so that when you open one of these options boxes, you have to move over the variables that you want to test. In this uh, particular procedure, you have to select out the ones that you don't want to test. But we only have one variable, it's already over there in the test field, so basically we're good to go. Now if you wanted to, you could click settings. If you wanted to change the, the comparison point uh, for your binomial test, you could uh, click customize and then click this compare observed binary probability click options and then you can change the value here to be something other than 0.50 but it's a binomial distribution so we want it to be 0.50 or 50 percent that's the null hypothesis statement essentially that each of those treatment phase data points is equally likely to be above the baseline median or below it so we're not actually going to change that just run the data and you can see that we have a p-value on top. The categories defined by data 0 and 1 occur with probabilities of 50%, 50%. That's the null hypothesis. And our data are deviating from the null hypothesis to the extent of p equals 0 0.092. So that does not reach the uh, traditional threshold for rejecting the null hypothesis, but it's getting pretty close. And if you look down here to this box, you can see we have some other information. Importantly, we have the standardized test statistic right here. That's the z-score. The z is negative 1.664. And in fact, I'm going to ignore the negative sign because uh, the only thing that I care about is whether the treatment phase data are on the favorable side or not. And th in this instance, they are. The negative simply, I mean, it depends on which way you code the zeros and ones. So it doesn't ha really have a meaning. And then you get a couple of figures that aren't really very informative. If you wanted to, you could show this bar chart, but it's, it's not very useful. So that's it. So you go back to the uh, PowerPoint. And in terms of charting out the results, uh, the binomial test result here is z equals 1.664. Notice that I'm ignoring the negative sign because higher scores are better and these treatment phase data points are on the favorable side. I suppose if I coded it reverse so that yes equals uh, 0 and no equals 1, then it would not have been reversed. It would not be a negative z-score. If it goes in the predicted hypothesized direction, give it a positive. If it goes against, if it makes people worse, if the treatment makes people worse, then give it a negative. Now, one of the interesting things here is that, uh, okay, you've got a z-score for the binomial test. And according to Robert Rosenthal's uh, various different writings on meta-analysis, you can transform a z-score into an effect size r uh, by using this formula where it's z over the square root of n. And what I'm using here for n is simply the number of treatment phase data points that went into the analysis, which is 13. So I take my z score divided by the square root of 13 and I have an effect size, which is something that um, in the various different uh, publications in the literature on single case design research, no one can really settle on a meaningful effect size. So here we have an effect size R that uh, has been uh, used in other areas of research uh, over the course of many, many years and is well received. The R family, it's similar to a correlation. Now I don't know how well this would stand up across uh, academic scrutiny, but uh, I think it looks like it makes sense. More research is probably needed. I'm going to give you a couple uh, more examples.
I won't do the SPSS analysis. I already have it uh, set up here. So here's another one. This is from a, an article by Lens. Uh, data provided in that article, 2013. Uh, so again, fake data. We uh, determine the median for the baseline. In this case, favorable is reduction in score. So again, I, I'm ignoring the negative sign if there is one because all I care about is whether or not the scores are better. And in this case, they are. So the binomial test after entering the zeros and ones into SPSS is 2.582 with a p-value 0 0.007. That is statistically significant. And then I convert it to an effect size. And then one more, again, just for comparison purposes. Here's a fake data set that I created where I wanted to see a large difference between baseline and treatment. And you can see that that large difference is reflected in a higher z-score, a lower p-value, and a larger effect size. So it's a pretty easy statistical approach to use. Uh, I, I'm surprised more people don't use this in single case design research. I would like to see this being used more often uh, and perhaps more research done on it to see whether it would stand up well. Uh, thanks for watching.